Hello, this is Geometry Lesson One. In this, I will discuss lines and angles basics. Now, this chapter is very interesting and very easy chapter once you understood the basics of this chapter geometry. So, let's start with the basics. First of all, what is a point? A point is like a dot. I make a dot. This dot. All these this points. This is A point. This is B point. This is C point. So, point is a dot. Once you mark with a pen on the paper, this is called as a point, a dot. What is the line segment? Join two points. This is point A. This is point B. Join two points. Shortest possible distance. The shortest possible distance. Shortest possible distance. Shorter, shortest possible distance. Between any two points is a line segment. It's a straight path. Line segment has two end points. Line segment has two end points. In this case, A and B two end points. I have line segment. Now, what is a line? If you extend the line line segment, this is line segment A B. If you extend the line segment in both direction, straight manner, straight, this will become a line. So line is a its length. Length of line is infinite because line is is a line segment extended in both direction infinitely. Line is a line segment. Extended both side infinitely, so line does not have any length. Its length is infinite. Line segment will be a part of line. Line segment is a part of line. AB is a line segment. AB is a line segment. Same way BC is also a line segment. BC is also a line segment. This is point C I have made. So line segment is a part of line. Line is a line segment extending in both direction infinitely. So line does not have any length, and the point is a dot once you mark with a pen on the paper. What is a ray? A ray is a line with one end point. Line with one end point. One end point is there. It can be extended in one direction infinitely. This is a ray. This is point A. This is point B. It can be extended further from point point B. This is called as ray. Now, what is an angle? Angle is made by two rays. Like this ray is O A, this is O B. This space, this is called as angle. Now, what types of angle they are? This is angle is measured clockwise, like anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise angle is anti-clockwise. Angle is considered as positive angles. So whenever we discuss a positive angle that we used to discuss always, uh, positive angle is angle anti-clockwise. Means anti-clockwise means against the clock. Clock moves like this. Clock moves in the clockwise direction. Anti-clockwise is against the clock. If this angle is let's say x, when x angle is between less than 90 but greater than zero, less than 90 degree, this is this is called as acute angle. This is called as acute angle. Whenever angle is 90 degree, this is 90 degree. This used to write like this. This angle is y. So y is equals to 90 degree. This is called as right angle. Right angle. Whenever angle is more than 90, like this. This angle z. The z angle is greater than 90 but less than 180. Degree, this Z angle is called as this Z angle is called as obtuse angle. 
obtuse angle so less than 90 but greater than 0 that was acute angle equal to 90 right angle greater than 90 but less than 180 is obtuse angle angle equal to 180 this is 180 degree angle this is called as straight angle this is called as straight angle it means straight angle this is this angle is 180 degree straight angle and when angle is more than 180 like this this angle is more than 180 degree let's say the theta so whenever angle is more than 180 angle is anti clockwise 180 and less than 360 degree that angle is called as reflex angle that angle is called as reflex angle so just summarizing theta or angle angle less than 90 degree acute angle equal to 90 right angle greater than 90 but less than 180 this is obtuse straight angle angle on a straight line this is 180 degree and whenever angle is more than 180 but less than 360 that will be called as reflex angle next is what is complementary angles any two angles whose sum is 90 degree two angles are complementary when their sum is 90 degree it's only about two angles it could be like this this is x this is y this complete angle we know that is 90 degree so x and y are complementary are complementary angle what are supplementary angles any two angles whose sum is 180 they are called as supplementary like this could be angle a this is angle b they lie on the straight line and we know that straight angle is 180 so angle a plus angle b we know that it's it would be 180 because complete angle this complete angle a plus b this is 180 degree so a plus b is 180 they are called as supplementary angle because their sum is 180 any two angles whose sum is 180 degree they are called as supplementary angle next is vertically opposite angle vertically opposite angles when two lines cut each other this angle a and this angle b they are called as angle a and b are vertically opposite angles voa means vertically opposite angles and what is your property they are always equal angle a is always equals to angle b why so let this is line l1 this is line l2 this angle is let's say c now we know that a plus c is equals to 180 degree because they lie on the straight line sum of all angles which lie on the straight line is always 180 because straight line means straight angle 180 degree so a plus c these two angles lie on a straight line l2 their sum will always be 180 degree same way b and c also lie on the same line angle b and c also lie on the line l1 their sum will also be equals to 180 degree so can I say a angle A plus C will be always be equals to angle B plus C because both are equals to 180. C and C will get cancelled out. You will left with angle A is equals to angle B. That's why I say that vertically opposite angles are always equal. Vertically opposite angles are always equal. I have proved this. VOA stands for vertically opposite angles. Whenever two lines cut the vertically opposite angles will always be equal now lines can be intersecting these are intersecting line or lines can be parallel these are parallel lines what is the property of parallel line the distance between them will always be same the distance between the two parallel lines is always same that is this h this will always be h at any point the shortest distance between them the shortest distance between the parallel lines will always be same parallel line examples are tracks of railway tracks of railway they are parallel intersecting lines you can see that they will cut at one point 
now we will discuss transversal lines transversal line what is called transversal line two lines if are there like this these are two lines and one line cut them this is l1 this is line number 2 this is l3 this l3 is called as transversal line now what how many angles will be there there will be eight angles that we can form here this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 this is 5 this is 6 this is 7 this is 8 eight angles will be formed it will be formed uh, let me name the angles one uh, one is corresponding angles corresponding angles when i say corresponding angle it means that they are at same position same position so which two are the corresponding angle can i say angle 1 and angle 5 they are corresponding angle why so because you can see that one is there this one tick mark this one is there on the top of the line left of transversal line top of line left of transversal same way angle 5 is top of line L2 and left of transversal line. Same way you can see that 2 and 6 are also corresponding angles. 4 and 8 are also corresponding. 3 and 7 are also corresponding. Same position with respect to transversal. You can see that 4 and 8. Angle 4, this angle 4 I am making tick mark. This angle 4 is on the top of the line L1 right of transversal this angle 8 is also top of the line L2 right of transversal so they are corresponding angle means same position next is alternate interior angle alternate interior angles alternate interior angles as the name suggests how many interior angles we have interior angles means the angle lies between the two lines so first of all when i say interior angles it means that when i say interior angles interior angle this means that angle 2 3 5 and 8 these are the interior angles because they lie in between the two lines when i say alternate interior angles it means that angle 2 and 8 are alternate interior because they lie on the alternate side of the line angle 2 is an interior angle as well as angle 8 is also interior angle but they lie on either side of the line angle 2 is left of transversal whereas angle 8 is right of transversal that's a alternate that's why it's their name is alternate interior angle same way angle 3 and 5 are also alternate interior because they are also interior angle on either side of the transversal line they are not on the same side one is on the right of the transversal other is on the left of transversal they are called as alternate interior angle next is angles on the interior angles interior angles on the same side of transversal interior angles on the same side of transversal they are you can see that same side of transversal by common side interior angles are 2 3 5 and 8 same side would be 2 and 5 and it would be 3 and 8 they are called as the interior angles on the same side of the transversal next is parallel lines and a transversal line this L1 is parallel to L2 and this line L3 is the transversal line. Now what will happen? Your corresponding angle, corresponding angle, corresponding angles, they will be equals. Corresponding angles are equal. Only when the lines are parallel. Only when the lines are parallel. So 1 is equals to 5. Corresponding angles as I explained in the previous slide angles which have us are on the same position with respect to transversal 1 and 5 2 and 6 are equal 4 and 8 are also equal and 3 and 7 are also 
equal. Very important that what you must know that what are corresponding angles. They are angles which lie which lie on the same position with respect to transversal. As you can see that angle one and five. One is on the top of line L one. On the top of line L one, left to transversal. Same five is the same position. Top of line L two with left of transversal. Alternate interior angles are also equal. Alternate interior angles are also equal. When, only when the lines are parallel and the transverse line cut them, alternate interior angles are always equal. So can I say that two will be equals to eight? Interior angles are two, three, five, eight. Alternate are two and eight are equal. Three and five are also equal. And third, very important property: sum of interior. Angles on the same side of transversal. On the same side of transversal. Transversal line is equals to one eighty degree. Sum of interior angle on the same side of transversal line. Their sum will be one eighty degree. Why so? But I want to say that I want to say that three plus eight is equals to one eighty degree. Angle on the same side of transversal. Let me make. Uh, diagram this two angle, this three and eight. They are on the same side of transversal interior angles. Their sum would be one eighty. Same would be two plus five. Their sum will also be one eighty. We can easily prove them. There is no difficulty in this because you can say that. Uh, let me prove this. Two plus five is one eighty. I can easily prove this. I know that one plus two is equals to one eighty degree. Why so? Because one and two lie on the Straight line, and you know that straight line, two angles consecutively makes total of one eighty degree. One plus two is one eighty degree, and I know that angle one is equals to angle five. I know that angle one is equals to angle five because they are corresponding. So replace angle one with five, so we'll get five plus two is equals to one eighty degree. You can easily prove that the sum of interior angles on the same side of transversal is one eighty degree. Also, you can easily prove this. Alternate interior angles are equal. Why so? Because you know that I need to prove two and eight are equal. How can I easily prove this? I know two and four are equal. Let me make this. I'm doing here. Two and four are equal. Angle two and four are equal. Why so? Because they are vertically opposite angle. They are always equal. Two and four are vertically opposite angle. Two lines cut. They are always equal. And we know that four is equals to eight. Why four is equals to eight? Because they are corresponding angle. So from this and this, you can say that angle two is equals to four. Angle four is equals to eight. I can easily say that angle two is equals to angle eight. So they are alternate interior angle. So we can easily prove that. And these are very important uh, basic building blocks of geometry. If you are good in this, you can easily solve the questions based on triangles. So that was geometry lesson one. In this, I discuss the lines and angles basics. The question based on lines and angle, I will solve in the next lesson. Thank you.